Have you ever felt a chill run down your spine while alone, convinced you're being watched? Imagine living in an isolated home where every creak, shadow and gust of wind feels like it's hiding something. Alive. I didn't believe in ghosts before, but after what I've been through, I'll never question their existence again. I want to share this story with you, so stay until the end, because this could happen to anyone. A fresh start in the middle of nowhere. I'd been looking for an escape, a place where I could get away from the constant noise, the crowded city, and the endless demands of work. I wanted solitude, a place to call my own, and maybe a little slice of peace. When I found a cabin nestled deep in the woods, hours from the nearest town, I knew it was the perfect retreat. The realtor assured me it was the perfect place for privacy, away from people. The price? Shockingly low. But I figured that was just because it was so remote. The first week was bliss. The cabin was old, but charming, with rustic beams and wide open windows that looked out onto an endless stretch of trees. The silence was deafening, but I liked it. I spent my days reading, hiking, and taking in the serene surroundings. But soon, that serenity started to feel stifling. I would catch myself looking over my shoulder, hearing footsteps on the porch, only to see nothing there. I brushed it off, telling myself it was just my nerves adjusting to the quiet. The first encounter. About two weeks in, something happened that I couldn't ignore. I was lying in bed, drifting off to sleep when I heard it. Faint whispering, almost like someone murmuring just outside my door. It was so subtle that at first I thought I was dreaming. But as I lay there, my pulse quickening, the whispers grew louder. I sat up, heart pounding and strained to hear. The voices were incoherent, just low murmurs that seemed to drift around the room. I got up and opened the door, expecting to find someone standing in the hallway. But the cabin was empty, and the hallway stretched out into darkness. I quickly closed the door, my mind racing. I convinced myself it was just the wind, or maybe the sound of the trees shifting outside. But the whispers didn't stop. The unseen watcher, as the days passed, the feeling of being watched grew stronger. I couldn't shake the sensation that someone, or something, was there with me, just out of sight. Shadows seemed to linger in the corners of my vision, slipping away when I turned to look. I would hear footsteps creaking on the floorboards above me, but the cabin only had one level. The nights were the worst. The whispers became more insistent, and it felt like they were right in my ear, as though someone was standing inches away, whispering secrets just for me to hear. Sleep was impossible. I felt drained, anxious, and jumpy all the time. I told myself I was being paranoid. After all, I'd wanted to get away from everything, right? But there was no denying it. Something was wrong. One night, while trying to distract myself from the oppressive silence, I went through some of the items that had come with the cabin. Old furniture, dusty books, and a stack of yellowed letters. As I sifted through them, I came across a small leather-bound journal. Its cover was cracked and worn, and I almost put it aside but curiosity got the better of me. The terrifying discovery. As I read, a chill ran down my spine. The journal belonged to the previous owner, a man named Thomas. From the first entry, it was clear that he had once loved the cabin as much as I did in those early days. But as I flipped through the pages, the tone changed. He started writing about strange noises, shadows that moved on their own, and whispers that echoed through the night. My blood ran cold as I read his words, feeling like I was looking into a mirror. In his final entries, Thomas confessed that he had become convinced the cabin was haunted by a presence he couldn't explain. He tried to leave, but every time he ventured too far, something would happen. His car wouldn't start, or he'd feel an invisible force pulling him back toward the cabin. The journal ended abruptly, with a chilling note scrawled in shaky handwriting. It won't let me go. Trapped. After reading Thomas's journal, panic set in. I wanted to leave, and immediately. But when I got to my car, my heart sank. It wouldn't start. The engine sputtered and died, refusing to come to life. I felt trapped, like the forest had wrapped its arms around me, holding me there. I tried calling for help, but my phone was dead, even though I charged it the night before. It was as if the cabin itself was alive, watching me, feeding off my fear. I spent the night in terror locked in my room with a flashlight and anything I could use as a weapon. The whispers became louder, clearer, like voices overlapping each other, calling my name in a low, sinister tone. Shadows slithered along the walls, creeping closer and closer, taunting me. I felt their icy breath on my skin, a touch so cold it burned. 
The final night by dawn, I'd made up my mind to leave no matter what. I packed a small bag, taking only the essentials. I walked down the path, determined to reach the nearest road and flag down a passing car, even if it took hours. But as I neared the edge of the property, I felt it. A force pressing against me, like an invisible wall blocking my path. The air grew heavy, thick with a sense of dread so intense that it took all my strength just to keep moving. I felt an unnatural coldness behind me, as if something was lurking just out of sight, following me, its presence weighing down on me. When I glanced back, I caught a glimpse of it, an indistinct shadowy figure standing at the edge of the trees, watching me with hollow eyes. With every step, the force pushing against me grew stronger, until it felt like I was moving through water. But I forced myself to keep going, refusing to look back, my heart pounding with fear. Finally, I reached the road. And as I crossed the threshold, the weight lifted. I felt the coldness recede, the air growing light again. I had made it. I didn't look back at the cabin. I didn't dare. I kept walking until I found help, eventually making it to town. I never went back to the cabin, not even to retrieve my belongings. I sold it to a distant buyer without a second thought, never mentioning what I'd seen, what I'd felt. I didn't want anyone to think I was crazy, but sometimes late at night I still feel it, the cold watching presence that lurked in that cabin, whispering in the dark. And I can't shake the feeling that maybe, just maybe, it's still out there, waiting for someone else to come. So if you ever dream of escaping to an isolated place far from everything, think carefully, because you might not be as alone as you think. And once you're there, it may never let you leave.